Hello, my name's Marty, and welcome to another one of my Matchbox makeovers. Today I am doing this fire engine, uh, which is a number 63B and was first built in 1964. If you had one with a silver foam nozzle, they could be worth up to $150. This one has a sign missing off the side, which I'm not happy about. The paintwork is rather ordinary and is going to need to be stripped back and redone. And the back here also needs a bit of a clean up and I have no idea what all these levers and dials are for, but I guess I'll work it out in the end. So here it is and I'm just giving it a general inspection. I've got the gold nozzle and half of it is missing. They often break off. It's also missing the pipes and ladder that go on the roof. The back end just looks rubbish and I'm gonna have to pull this apart to strip it and repaint it. So first up, I'm gonna remove this rivet. And I'm gonna replace it when I put it back together with this tiny little M2 screw. I'm going to drill out that hole with this small drill and tap it to receive the screw. That way I can put it back together and it will be like new again. Now this rivet post goes all the way through to the other side and I'm confident that I can drill quite deep into this without damaging anything. So after I've drilled out the hole for the screw I'm now removing just the barest, thinnest amount of metal off of the top of the rivet so that I can prise the model apart using very gentle pressure and a flat bladed screwdriver like that. That seemed to work okay. It's an unusual casting this one in that half of it at the rear there is inserted into the upper casing and projects from the rear so it's rather unusual i'm just checking that i didn't drill that hole too big for this screw it was a bit borderline but i think i managed to get away with it so this is that uh, original small hole that i drilled and i've threaded it with a tap and i'm just test fitting this screw which seems to go in beautifully Now I made this nozzle extension from a piece of tubing and I hammered it flat and I drilled into the end of the original nozzle and pushed it in there and glued it into position with some super glue. And I also put a little bit of filler on it just to smarten it up. Now this casting I thought originally was bare metal, but it's not as can be seen. I've taken the paint off there so I'm going to have to take all this paint off to repaint the silver, silver. Now today I'm using a different method to remove the ends of axles because they're not very long and there's not a lot of material there for me to reform the end. So using these, these smooth long nosed pliers, I've just squashed the end, the, the flange on the end and I'm able to remove the wheels. Unusual for this model are these tiny little suspension units made of white plastic. They're only on the front and the rear wheel. Now it's time to remove the rest of the wheels. How's that for magic? Now you see it, now you don't. Took me a while to find that, but I got there in the end. So this is the top and the bottom here, and as usual, use this poly paint stripper and some hemostats, or some people call them forceps. And today I'm using a brush where I'm getting the product out of the can and painting it on so it's not quite as wasteful as tipping it in the, uh, the container, which I've done in the past. Maybe this can will last more than six models for once. 
does a really good job of stripping this paint off. Look how the paint has reacted to this product. And then using this pink toothbrush, it's very easy to remove the paint. So that was the red, now the silver. Once again, the paint strip has done a marvellous job. So after I removed most of it, I then used some soap and hot warm water in the sink to remove the rest of it. And also to clean up the model so there's no residue of the paint stripper left behind, which could complicate matters when I come to repainting, which has happened in the past. So that looks stupendous. That's exactly what I'm after. Oh, hang on, there's a little bit on the inside there. There we go, that's brilliant. Now the base. Must remember to wash the sink out afterwards because uh, I'll get in trouble if I don't. A fair bit of detail on this. Okay, I'm giving it a good old clean this bit here because I wasn't happy with uh, how it was looking and I a little bit paranoid about uh, stuffing up the paint on this one because I've only given myself a day and a half to get this project out of the way. So after it's dried, I am now giving the model an undercoat. And I'm preparing my spray booth here with these magnetic clamps so that after I've undercoated the model with the Tamiya Fine Grey, I can just snap them up, up there like that out of the way and let them dry. Here's a close up of the details. A lot of lockers and cupboards on this vehicle. There's a few lights on the front there. A badge, like a brand of the truck. Now I'm gonna paint it with this Mr. Hobby Red and Mr. Hobby Silver. Here's the red, number 327 gloss. Uh, give it a bit of a stir. Tip some into a shot glass and thin it with some thinners. Now in this instance, my spray gun is underperforming somewhat. And I suspect there's a block nozzle, so Oh, there we go. I'm moving the needle forwards and backwards and trying to sort of uh, force the blockage out of the nozzle. So I make a start and I'm not too impressed. Maybe it's time for me to buy a new spray gun. I'm not too sure. But this is the second model I've done in, in as many days. And this spray gun is underperforming which again, I'm not happy with. But uh, I persist and give it a rather thick coat of paint. And hopefully when I give this a top coat, it's gonna look magnificent. So here's the Mr. Hobby number eight silver that I'm going to use for the chassis of this truck. It's a bit gluggy. And I can tell you what, I'm making a bit of a mess. I'm getting it all over my fingers. Someone will go off at me here for putting thinners on my hands. They'll say, why didn't you wear rubber gloves? And I'm gonna say, I don't know. Probably because I'm stupid. And I clean up. So I'm now trying to spray the silver paint onto the chassis. And once again, the brush is playing up and I'm a little bit amused as to what is going on here. I'm hoping when I give it a top coat of some gloss varnish, it's going to hide some of this uh, rather unsightly spray. I'm also going to top coat the body of the fire engine. Well, the casting on this is very average also, I did notice, especially the red body. It's um, got a lot of imperfections in it, but uh, you know, you can only work with what you've got. Here's a close up of my uh, replica foam nozzle that I made from a bit of flattened aluminium pipe drilled and glued into the original nozzle. As I said, if this model had a silver nozzle, it could be worth up to $150. But 
but mine is gold so I'm returning it to its original condition by painting my homemade nozzle gold. Even if it was silver, I don't think this model would have been worth more than a couple of bucks because of the condition it was in. And this gold nozzle uh, adds a very interesting element to this model and contrasts nicely with the red cabin. You'll see at the end, it absolutely makes this model look gorgeous. Now I'm using some Mr. Hobby silver and I'm just repainting the grill and headlights as per the original model. Looks nice. Uh, these axles, I am just cleaning off any corrosion that's on them using a little bit of light emery paper. Here's an example of one that I haven't done just for comparison reasons. I actually uh, go, the, go the extra yard here and I use a cotton bud and some metal polish just to make them look nice. Here's a shot of the unique plastic suspension blocks on this model that I've never seen on any other model and for the sake of attention to detail I'm giving them a bit of a clean but these are quite unusual they float by the way when I dropped them in the bath I was digging around in the bottom in the bowels of the, the bowl and couldn't find them it's because they were floating in amongst the bubbles and at the same time I thought I'd give the tires a bit of a clean now for something different I'm going to make a box. Good job I got that sign. Right, where was I? That's right, for something different, I'm gonna make a box, just because I thought it was something nice for you guys to watch. I've uh, made this box using PaintShop Pro and downloaded some images off the internet and resized them and recolored them and smartened them up and uh, printed them onto my matchbox box template that I have and now I'm doing the horizontal creases followed by the vertical creases now if anyone wants one of these boxes uh, let me know send me an email and I'll, I'll email you the box and you can print one out yourself uh, it's not perfect the end flaps are a little bit too big so I've had to crease those over there on the blue and that one there needed a bit of extra trimming, but do you know what? It turned out not too bad at the end for that. It's quite nice. I'm happy with that. Now, the wheels, six of them here, I gave them a bit of a, a wash, tire wash. The Tamiya Black thinned down with some thinners. And I ordered these plastic parts the details here, the missing parts from uh, recovertoy.com. Now they're not bad, they're quite expensive and they, they cost a lot to get here because they come from, I think it's Holland. Anyway, I've got to trim them up a little bit before I can use them. There's a little bit of flashing on these, uh, the words here that go on the side. So I just uh, trim those with this beautiful craft knife that I received from my, in my last unboxing video and I haven't I've used it every day since so it's, I'm so pleased I got it and there's a little bit of uh, extra plastic on the end of those pipes there that I had to cut off and here they are they're ready to be fitted to the model I thought however Things are not what they seem, as you will see. So the nozzle just clicks on like that, with firm finger pressure. Boof, there we go, beautiful. Good tight fit. Now these things on the side here, I don't know what you call them, words, plastic words. They're a little bit warped and they tend to lift off and they, they actually don't lock on. I thought that they would have mushroomed ends and they would fit in these holes. So what I've had to end up doing was I used a bit of uh, Araldite and applied it with a toothpick and I filled the holes and I'm hoping that when I put the words in, mount them through the holes, that the Araldite will hold them in position. So I've done that. Here's a close-up of that suspension unit in use after I've refitted the wheels. 
works quite well. Now for this job, I'm, there's not a lot of extra material on the end of the axle, so I'm just peening it over with a ball pane hammer. Now I've fitted the base onto the, the body and I'm using this color match screw to screw it in and hold it into position. Now the pipes don't really fit too well. Um, I had to trim the, the bits where the, that go into the holes to make them fit. And this ladder is totally not right. One of the rungs is directly where it shouldn't be. So what I've actually done is I've, I, I cut the rung out and I paint that part on the top of the roof white. So it looks like a rung on the ladder. That was the only way I could get this ladder to fit. There we go, it's the fourth one down. Using this craft knife again. I just cut that ring out, uh, rung out. And I'm just checking I got the right one and I did. So the back one will fit in nicely. But the front one won't. But now the rung's missing. I'm hoping if I just trim these little stubs off here, that it should fit and it does. It clicks on there quite nicely now. But it would not fit with that rung there because it's right in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna paint that little bit there white and hopefully no one will notice. Well, you will, because you'll know I've done it, but anyone who looks at it with the naked eye you're not going to know. Look at that. You've got to admit, that looked good. So here's what I started with as a reminder. Broken foam nozzle. No plastic pipes, ladders or words. Messed up paint job and rusty axles. And this is what it looks like now. I hope you agree. It looks mighty fine with that gold foam nozzle fitted to the roof. And with the new pipes and the new ladder and the words on the side, we all now know it's an airport crash tender. So let's see what it looks like. Here's a shot of the Matchbox box I made. Just for comparison so you can see what it looks like and what it turned out like. Not too bad, I'm quite happy with that. And the airport crash tender is now good to go and can be on standby when aircraft are starting up or landing. And if necessary, they can put the fire out. Okay, thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. So until next time, see you later. Bye. is going on this piece of shit. Fuck. What a fucking mess. Oh my god, I've got shit everywhere. <laughs> fuck now. Mother f <gasps> Mother f